Welcome back to video lesson 4.2, where we're going to take a look at your role as an instructor here at NWTC. This video is really just kind of uh, going to be giving you a very quick snapshot of some of the, the learning styles, um, learning theories, and, and how you might go about lesson planning for adult learners and the college student. Um, again, understand that it's a very quick snapshot. Some of this stuff comes from our teaching methods course, which is the first course that we recommend you take as a new part-time faculty member here at the college. The first thing we take a look at is, is how do we go about planning lessons and designing a classroom experience for our adult learners called androgyny. And the first thing that we need to understand is that adults really need to know the why they are learning something. I might argue that all students, and regardless of their age, they, they really need to know the why. What is this going to do? How is this going to benefit me? And how might this relate to the career choice that I am making? Second, they need to learn experientially. They need to be able to practice with what they're learning and try to apply it. They can't just sit back and typically watch what's happening. They need to experience the learning for themselves hands-on. Third, they learn via problem solving. Many adults learn excellently by having an opportunity to play with the information that they've learned and apply it in some sort of a problem. This gives them the opportunity to learn experientially, but also apply the why, why they've learned it, and here's how it directly results through problem solving. Finally, they learn best topics of immediate value. If there's something that they can go and apply right away to a job that they're working on or a project that they're working on in a class, they will learn that topic pretty quickly because they know that it's got some immediate attachment or, again, it attaches back to number one, the why. So we learn that through these four kind of processes and helping to make sure that as we build a lesson plan in a class, a classroom experience, that we're really trying to target these four areas in building lessons. The other piece that we kind of look at is there's a process to this learning that happens in adults, um, a sort of a flow, if you will. When it's always in context, it looks like something that, that's relatable to the adults. So again, this kind of attaches back to that why. If it's in context and they can understand why, they can use it to, to build a specific set of skills. We also talk about using their input references. Here at the campus, we talk about savvy instruction. Savvy, S-A-V-I. Somatic are those learners that need to be hands-on and fidgeting or moving. We try to design lessons and plans that allow for some sort of movement. If you're building groups, ask students to get up and exchange tables. If you need students to grab a, a piece of paper, have them come up to the front of the room and grab it. The A stands for auditory. Many of you are listening to this um, video testimonial and this video uh, learning plan, so that's auditory. The visual part is people need to see it. When you give directions for an activity and you only speak the directions, your visual learners will have a hard time understanding those directions because they need to visualize them perhaps in a step-by-step -step manner. Providing clear pictures instead of talking about what they might see. Providing the pictures help those visual learners. And the intellectual uh, learners really like to apply and have an opportunity to think about a project or think about a topic. Those intellectual learners will really grasp, some, grasp something and see how they can twist and manipulate it to make it understandable. We also look at learning by processing it. What's the big picture of what I'm learning? How is this going to apply to, to the big picture of my learning process? And how might this small piece fit into that big picture? It's really getting at that detail level, that how do all of the details fit together? And then the last part of this learning process is they react to it. Either they have an immediate response, something is triggered that they, oh, that's right, I remember when I learned this back in high school, or I learned this working on the farm. Or it might come to them 20 minutes later in the car ride home. I know I am guilty of this all the time, that I should have thought about uh, teaching this way today in class. And I will try and keep that in mind for the next time. 
So the, the big thing that I really want to highlight though on this page uh, for you is really these four areas. As you're building lessons and building instruction, think about how you can accommodate all four different types of learners. How adults learn, you know, the retention rates. <clears throat> This slide, while it may be a little bit blurry and fuzzy to see, I apologize for that, but we, we talk about retention rates from different teaching techniques. So these are some of the techniques that you could use in your teaching classroom. The first one up here on top, lecture mode, typically only has a 5% retention rate. Students will only retain 5% of the information that you lecture, whereas they may retain 10% from reading about it, or 20% from an audio-visual. If you give them an opportunity to demonstrate what they've learned, now we're, we're getting a little bit higher. They might retain 30% of the information. What we really want to focus on, though, are the information on the left-hand side. Group discussions, learning by doing, and teaching others are the three highest teaching techniques that you can employ to help raise the retention rates. If we give students an opportunity to work in small groups and teach one another about content after you, the instructor, have given them the necessary information, we've now created a better chance that they're going to retain the information. If we have group discussions, it might be 50% where they're sharing information and sharing ideas. Or if they're learning by doing, they, they've been given a task and you're asking them to apply skills and knowledge to a specific task within your classroom, they're learning by doing. So the goal is to witness this stuff inside of your classroom over here. We really want to witness all of this happening. Because that's why you are the expert in the classroom. You want to correct when they're not doing it the right way or they're not teaching somebody else the right way. You don't want that to happen out in the comments. Where perhaps you might be able to give pre-work or homework in these areas. You might be able to video record a lecture and ask them to watch it. You might be able to give them a specific case study or reading for them to come in and then ask them to teach others what they learned. So consider that as you are building your lesson plans. We also need to consider, though, this learning cycle. The learning cycle really is a continuous cycle that happens throughout a class period. The motivation really talks about the why. Why do I need to learn something that you're going to teach me, Mr. Goodacre? What good is this going to do me? Or perhaps it's just a fun brain teaser to get their brains activated and removing the barriers from the rest of the world. So that motivation is typically where we want to start. After the motivation, we give them the comprehension. This is the what. What information do we need to go? Usually, this is where instructors will spend their lecture time. So we go from the why to the what, or the lecture. New research is showing that we want to spend less than 15 minutes in lecture. 15 minutes. Once you hit 15 minutes, you start to lose your students without giving them an opportunity to practice. If they aren't allowed to practice what you just taught them, they may lose the information that you just taught them. So perhaps you've given them 15 minutes of lecture, and now I'm going to go to an activity called Think, Pair, Share. Think how you might solve this problem, pair up with a partner and discuss what you got, and then let's share it out with the rest of the class. So we want to make sure then that we're, we're, we're going from a lecture to a practice. After a practice, I might go to application, or I might jump back into comprehension and give them a little bit more lecture. Or I might hop back over here to the why and letting them discuss why we're going to do the next piece. And the application, or the apply piece, really comes at the end. Once I've given them all the information that they need to know, I want them to be able to apply it to a project. I want them to teach others. I want them to be able to complete a certain task. So this learning cycle is important in that we want to make sure we give them the why, establish the norms. We can go into some sort of a lecture or a, a comprehension mode of giving them the, the information where they encounter the learning. Perhaps we go into a practice mode and let them practice what they just encountered, and then we can jump back and forth. But it's important to always hit back up on this why and give, continually give them that feedback. 
The biggest question that we often get from, from new part-time instructors is, on the first day of class, what do I actually do? What's the best practice and policy? The first thing you definitely want to do is make sure that you set and communicate these clear expectations. What are your classroom policies? What are your late policies, your, your absence policies? What are your homework policies, your testing? Go through your policies and your essentials of your course syllabus. Know your essentials and what you might say the ground rules to what your classroom is going to function as. And lay those ground rules from day one. Be firm and fair from the very first day to keep a consistent classroom environment. Then hold the students accountable and follow up when they're not adhering to those ground rules and those policies and expectations. Now, after you've done that on that first day, go ahead and jump into your content. Start teaching what you need to teach. That's why the students are there. They need the information. We do not have enough time in a 15-week or even more abbreviated classrooms to let students go and absorb other information. Make that first day and that first lesson something exciting. Make sure you build in an activity that's exciting for students and makes them want to come back the next time. You have all the control on that first day to set the tone and to set the stage. So do a great job of setting the tone and stage on the first day and you'll have them hooked for the rest of the semester. We've only scratched the surface again on some of these teaching methods here at NWTC. When you have the chance, make sure that you register for teaching methods where we'll learn a lot more engagement strategies, a lot more uh, activities for assessments. Uh, but if you have questions and you still need some answers, make sure you email them to me or call me at 498-6979. And as always, don't forget to complete the assessment following this video.